Uh, well, the this afternoon I am going to talk about history of psychology in India. I will be talking about its uh, beginning, expansion and decline in the last one century. And before I begin my talk, I would like to make a distinction between psychology in India and Indian psychology. Psychology in India is a term which is used for the what we call the western or scientific or modern psychology, uh, modern psychology in the India. And when we are using the term Indian psychology, we mean the psychology which is of Indian origin. And with this way I would, I would be doing is that uh, I would be tracing its history from the beginning of the, in the beginning of the 20th century and I will see what kind of developments which have taken place in the whole century, one century, because psychology in India is will be completing 100 years of its existence by 19, 2016, because it began in 2016. And I think uh, this is a, a appropriate time for us to also understand what we have been able to achieve, contribute and where we need to go now. Before I begin, I would like to say that psychology as a one of the most ancient country, one of the ancient country in the world, psychology was a discipline which began much earlier in this country and we had a long tradition of studying mind, consciousness and human behavior. As an old, age old, uh, if you look at the age old text of uh, Vedas, Mahap Upanishads and other scriptures, which uh, have uh, uh, repositories of psychological knowledge and theories. And in this context, we, uh, we can say that uh, the primary goal and objective of these uh, Indian psychology was in terms of the self realization and uh, elevation of human suffering. Yoga system evolved sophisticated mind control techniques for the purpose of inner growth. We can say that Gita in a way is one of the most ancient book on counseling psychology where Krishna is exhorting Arjun to fight rather than giving up. Now, in that sense we can I, mean I can make a term that psychology which was uh, which was studied earlier or psychology which was discussed was earlier was not the psychology which was using the present day methodology. The kind of methodology which we were using was of a different kind. Second that during that period no distinction was made between philosophy, psychology and spirituality. So, when psychology made a new beginning in the last century, in the beginning of last century during the British rule, it had no continuity with the knowledge institutions of, the, of this country. Psychology with a laboratory experiment and laboratory studies was a novel idea, new approach uh, which fascinated many of the Indian scholars in the beginning. And uh, during the colonial period, a large number of uh, teach, teachers were required for, for colleges and the schools to teach. And I think psychology made its beginning, if you look at the historically, as a subject in the teachers training colleges. In the beginning of the last century, uh, it was the initiative of the Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University, uh, Sir Bhajan Nath Seel, who was the professor of mental and moral philosophy in Calcutta University. And with his initiative, the first laboratory of psychology was started in 1905. And if we know the history of this country after that, in the 1905, the Calcutta, was, the Bengal was divided into East and Western Bengal and because there was a lot of agitation which had taken place for almost 6, 7 years and no could further development could place, take place during this period. So, the first psychology department in this country is a, started in 1916 in Calcutta University and the first chairman of this department was Mr. was Professor Anand Sen Gupta. Anand Sen Gupta, if you look at the history of Bengal, that was a time when the nationalist, nationalist movement was, was very prominent and many nationalist, nationalist group 
collected money and sent a number of Indian scholars to West for the study, higher studies. They thought that when they will come back from the West, they will start in this country a nationalist university. However, when uh, the, these scholars came back, that group had disintegrated and uh, as a result, Professor uh, Ajahn Sen Gupta joined Calcutta University and the department which this he started, because his training was with Mustenberg, who was a who was a student of William Wundt. So he, the first department of psychology in this country was a department of experimental psychology, not the department of psychology. And uh, in that department, the, the the kind of work which they were doing was primarily of experimental nature because they thought at that time. I think the whole idea was that that. Uh, uh, in, the, in the experimental work in the areas of perception, cognition, learning, memory, it is easy to have uh, transfer of the knowledge from the west, west to the east. And these are the areas where cultural factors are not very, very playing very prominent role. And because of this reason, this kind of work which uh, Professor Sen Gupta began uh, to conduct and uh, in the laboratories in the department uh, at Calcutta. So, because of the very beginning, the scientific nature of psychology in this country, in psychology became a part of the Indian Science Congress in 1923, as early as in 1923. And Indian Journal of Psychology, Indian Psychological Association was started in 1924. And uh, Indian Journal of Psychology was started a, a, a year later. So, that was the development which took place during the, that particular period. But Sen Gupta did not stay in Calcutta for a very long time. He moved from Calcutta to Lucknow and he did not stay in even academics, he moved to an administrative position in Calcutta in, in Lucknow. But there he worked with a very famous sociologist Radha Kamal Mukherjee. And with Radha Kamal Mukherjee, he brought out a book on social psychology in 1928. And that book was published from UK. And uh, if you look at that, the first book of social psychology by Alport just uh, came in 24. This book was quite contemporary of the earlier work, earlier books in the area of social psychology. After Sen Gupta's leaving Calcutta, it was Gidnu Shekhar Bose who became the head of the psychology department. Gidnu Shekhar Bose was not a psychologist. By training, he was a doctor, he was a psychiatrist, and he was in a close contact with Sigmund Freud. So, because of his Sigmund Freud's influence and because of his com constant com communication with him, uh, psychoanalysis became the main uh, first area of the department. He started the Indian uh, Psychoanalytic Society as a society which became, which got associated with the uh, International Psychoanalytic Society. And that was a period when in the West, Sigmund, Freud's, Sigmund Freud's work was very controversial. Many of the, many of the countries, many, many places his work was al almost banned, not taught in the universities and uh, his books were not, uh, uh, were not, books were not available. And that was a time when India in Calcutta, he was, his work was readily accepted and taught in the academic circles. He also started uh, the, the first mental hospital in this country, the called the Lumini Park Memorial Hospital. And uh, he, in 1940 and uh, in 1947, he started a journal, very famous journal of the, the, that year was Samiksha. There was a journal he started and later on when uh, the, when Jung, Meyer and Spearman came to India to attend the Indian Science Congress in 1938, the department started another wing. That was the department, that was the wing of applied social, uh, applied psychology. But prior to the independence from the, from the British rule, there were two other departments which started in this country. One was at Mysore University, and that department was headed by uh, by Professor Gopal Swami, and uh, Gopal Swami was 
trained at Dandan University with Spearman. And so, naturally his work was in the area of mental testing and he was the person who started the first NMA laboratory at Mysore. The other department uh, before independence was started at Patna. And Patna had a very ambitious plan of having a teaching department, a, 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 a psychological research and services, uh, services center. So, that they could, they, they could uh, coordinate the act, active research and teaching with the, uh, so with the services, psychological services. That was the idea which, uh, which Mathi, who was the person who, who inspired all this development at Patna was working. Mathi was also trained with, uh, he was trained with Girin Shekhar Bose. And in that sense, the uh, work which they were doing in the Patna was of uh, psycho, psychoanalytic and clinical psychology. In short, uh, Patna, these were the three centers we can say which were, were functional during these only three departments of psychology before the independence. Research during this period as we can understand was primarily in the area of experimental psychology, psychoanalysis and the work which was, do, was doing in the areas where cultural factors are not very important. This is what they were talking about and uh, primarily working on the basis of the laboratory work and the value free kind of research that kind of was the, the, the ethos which was prevalent during that particular period. And that was British government never paid any attention to the development of psychology. For primarily they have made a lot of investment in the establishment of the department of sociology, anthropology primarily for the reason that they wanted to understand Indian culture and society. Because they knew that uh, 1857 that, that uh, rebellion movement was because they have failed to understand the culture and sensitivity of the people in this country. So, there was the concern and these were the primary thrust areas which Britishers promoted. But for them psychology was not at all in, as individual, the study of individual behavior was not in, at, at all in, in important subject. But during that period, one important work which we can I can uh, quote, that was the work of uh, Prasad, Prasad, which was published in British Journal of Psychology in 1935. And that work was based on the, uh, there was a big earthquake uh, in northern part of the country, in Bihar and Bihar. And uh, Prasad studied uh, what kind of rumors people were spreading in that area. And to his amazement, he found that most of the rumors he collected almost uh, 30,000 rumors. And most of the, he, he found that most of the rumors which people were spreading around were fear arousing. And he was wondering why people who are afraid, already scared of the earthquake are spreading this kind of rumors. And, but this is the kind of work which he did and he collected and analyzed these rumors. And later on, when uh, Festinger brought out his theory of cognitive dissonance, he has categorically mentioned in an interview to Cohen and other people that his primarily inspiration or ideas of uh, cognitive dissonance theory has come from this work of Prashad and later work by, uh, by, by, by Dugan Sinha. That was the work he inspired his uh, development of the theory. One more uh, thing I would like to mention before what happened in uh, development before independence, much before the independence was the close association between contact between William James and Vivekanandan. William James is considered to be the father of modern psychology in America. And when Vivekanandan went to states, Chicago for the world religious conference, after the conference he stayed at Harvard for almost one month. And during that period, uh, William James used to go almost every day to attend his discourses. And he had a many times the, the, the meetings with uh, Vivekanand and that continued almost for a month. And it is said that uh, when, when the uh, William James talked about uh, stream of consciousness, this whole famous idea of stream of consciousness, his idea of stream of consciousness was inspired by the, his discourses with uh, Vivekanand. But later on in 1911, 
when William James wrote the book Varieties of Religious Experiences, there is famous book. He had he had not mentioned even once the name of of Vivekananda. Though many of the ideas he took he took was from his discourses. Now after independence, the government was really concerned and interested in expanding and developing higher education in this country. And uh, for that purpose, uh, the government has started made this initiative of starting new departments, training the faculty in psychology and that was a time when, uh, uh, then when the many of the UEC and other government bodies were coming up for the purpose of expanding higher education in this country. And uh, during that period one event I could, I could say is that the, the, the because of the, because of the Hindu Muslim violence, communal violence during the, during the uh, partition time, government really got concerned, it was concerned that why such much violence can take place and why people kill each other. And uh, for that government uh, uh, approached UNESCO and from UNESCO, uh, you know, they, with the collaboration of UNESCO, they, they conducted a major project in the under the supervision of Gardner Murphy. And they brought, later on Murphy brought out a book also on and in which many Indian uh, researchers also collaborated and the book was in the minds of men, the violence is here, not outside. Anyway, that was important work uh, in the, the period and then the university starts, there was so much expansion in the beginning that uh, after uh, within 15 years of independence. Almost 20, uh, 20 or 30, 30 new universities were started. And uh, when the, these universities were started, they did not have the faculty for psychology because there were not so, so many trained and educated psychologists were available during that period. So, most of these psychology departments were started by bifurcating or taking faculty from other sister departments. Most of the most of the faculty which came to psychology during that period was from philosophy department. That was one of the development I think uh, which has a serious uh, importance for the development of psychology. And uh, what another thing which government during did during that period apart from setting up new departments was uh, the cultural exchange program. And the culture exchange program with the West, particularly the UK and the Commonwealth and the America during the Kennedy and Johnson period that uh, common, Commonwealth scholarship or Fulbright scholarship or other, these kind of other scholarships, large number of Indians, Indian scholars and students went to America, Canada, UK for higher education. In fact, it used to be the pain loads of students were going at that time because large number of these people were given fellowships to go and study and come back and establish the departments. So, that, uh, that was one of the major uh, development which uh, happened during that particular period uh, in the early years of the independence. And uh, when now, so when these scholars who went to states or west for the studies, when they came back in early in the early 70s or during that period uh, and they started with the work in the academic department. They were trained, better trained in terms of methodology, in terms of concepts, in terms of uh, scientific uh, uh, science way of doing scientific psychology and because of that training and because of their get expertise in this area. What actually happened that uh, in doing the late 60s when most many of the head of departments in this country would we look at the history came from the philosophy departments. But later on it came to turn that these people who came from the west they took over the leadership role and psychology started growing in this country at a rapid pace uh, as a scientific discipline. Now, this was also a period during which uh, I would say psychology was growing outside the university system also. 
because university has a limitations of uh, uh, research facilities and opportunities. And uh, many of these IITs and IIMs and agriculture institutions and those the institutions where number of prominent psychologists were studying, were teaching and doing research. And that was the period when the psychology was expanding rapidly uh, in different domains and different regions. And when the UGC started uh, these schemes of uh, special assistance and advanced centers, and that also helped psychology in its growth uh, in the uh, in the later later decades and years. Now this, uh, I would say, because of this rapid expansion of psychology in this country uh, in 60s and 70s. And uh, psychology was uh, with the expectations of the people, expectations of the government, expectations of the psychology is really coming up to contribute to the national development and the growth or re reconstruction of the of the country. And uh, there was a period when uh, there was then uh, because of their presence, uh, because of uh, so many universities where psychology students were studying and teaching and research was going on. Uh, it was expected that psychology will going be going to make a big mark uh, and contribute to the national development. But uh, these expectations were gradually in uh, late, I would say mid, mid 70s, people realizing these expect, the expectations are not being met because psychology was still a alien discipline in this country, a discipline which was primarily concerned about, uh, as it was alleged at that time, or it was uh, observed by many psychologists at that time. There is a, is a discipline which is uh, only imitating, replicating, duplicating the Western work. And Indian social reality, Indian problems and social Indian issues are not becoming part of the, uh, of the, of the research concerns of the Indian psychologists. And that was a time when uh, it was a, uh, there was a some kind of a doubt and and, and the Indian psychology was in really crisis. That that, that it may be considered a period of the crisis of identity. That uh, what psychology can contribute and, and what how psychology can play a more meaningful role, a more uh, purposive role in the uh, various government bodies in different places. And the, in terms of the social development and social uh, issues and problems, and how they can make a contribution. And the, there was a time when Nandi, like Nandi, wrote very categorically that Indian psychology has become merely imitative and subservient, but also dull and replicative. That was his very famous statement, which he made in a, in a paper in 1974. And Dugan Sinha and other people said psychology is nothing but replicate is a carbon copy of the western work. And that was a kind of uh, ethos in which uh, you know uh, psychology was a lot of uh, soul searching and thinking was going that how psychology can be made more viable, more efficient, more to the to this concern the society and for to the country. And uh, many, many of the analysis was done during this period that why psychology is not able to make this kind of contribution. And I think one of the one of the explanations. There are many explanations which were given during the, during the period, and one of the which uh, I developed much earlier is, is that Indian psychologists live in two different worlds. That was a one of the thesis, one of the hypotheses that, uh, in spite of all these kind of developments, what was imagined when the Western psychology started, or scientific psychology, psychology started growing in this particular in this country, there was a lot of hopes and expectations, and there was the excitement that uh, the, the, the psychology in this country will make important discoveries, will in the terms of our understanding our own social reality, and uh, these hopes that a positive science, a science which uh, was not existing in this country earlier before the British period, we will have something new explanations, new interpretations, new ways of thinking and new ways of understanding our own problems, which our traditional Indian psychology could not provide those kind of explanations. 
and uh, keeping that in mind that uh, another thing which was to that this was the expectations from a psychologist but if you look at that the, the academic psychology which was uh, in the within the academic setting was not consistent or not compatible with the values beliefs practices social systems social family and other systems within this country so that kind of a gross incompatibility he was he was that indian psychologist as a professional was a different person than as a as a as a as a, as a social being or as a uh, as a creative person as a creative being and that kind of uh, demarcation that kind of division of the psychologist split somebody said you know later on uh, said that in a psychologist suffered from a kind of split split personality as a professional he is a one person and as a individual as a social being or as a creative being he is a different person and caught between these two worlds we would say this professional and socio cultural indian psychologist had a problem in balancing so there was how to balance these two worlds and uh, so there was a problem of, of uh, making a kind of a division between metaphysical and empirical this was one of the thing between the clinical and experiential between intuitive and objective and all these kind of debate all these kind of dilemmas because in real life they are doing something else and in the academic setting they are doing something else and uh, because of that uh, what kakkar said very made a statement that that indian indian psychologist another thing is that indian, indian mind works in a different way the whole the book which uh, kakkar wrote and he, he wrote uh, early, earlier also that that uh, indian mind does not try to reconcile or the opposites or different effects but what indian mind does is that they leave leave, leave them as, as in co coexistence that they coexist uh, in the that both the realities are considered to be accepted as the nature, as a way of nature works and he made a statement that the aesthetic satisfaction of a hindu myth resides in the full severing of both the extremes rather than seeking a synthesis so that kind of ethos was not in this culture which was very much in the western culture and uh, that kind of a mind mindset that you have to study the subject with a very objective and uh, uh, and objective way that kind of uh, ethos and that kind of mindset indian did not have indian was more you know a kind of a more humanistic and more uh, holistic and that kind of approach which indian says was not very was was not very relevant or not very conducive to the growth of uh, academic or scientific psychology uh, science as it is understand understood in, in terms of the uh, scientific practices in the natural sciences and then in social sciences now how indians uh, indian psychologists lived in two different worlds i will give you some examples i think that will make uh, this point clearer that how they lived and uh, if you look at the for the bojan nas seal who wrote who started the first psychology laboratory he was an eminent scholar of uh, uh, of ancient indian sciences that was uh, he was this thing that he wrote a lot about how indian uh, knowledge system and about it what he wrote and he was a person who he, one way he was starting in the laboratory psychology laboratory Uh, other way he, he he really encouraged jadunath sena he was one of the another uh, scholar of that time to write a volumes on indian psychology he was the main inspiration behind him if you look at the uh, work of anand sen gupta anand sen gupta wrote on a wide variety of subjects he wrote about, about the mystical experiences also he wrote about the western dance also he wrote about the you know all kind of uh, different different uh, indian ethos and indian concerns and he, these were published in the uh, journal of that particular time which was of a different nature uh, from experimental psychology the department he started and if you look at uh, another uh, and later on raj raj nayan wrote uh, in his biography of uh, sen gupta the sen gupta turned religious and got interested in mystical tradition and published work in that area that was another stream which he followed 
apart from the experimental work he was doing in the department. Girinder Shekhar Bose, uh, his work was as I said was in the area of psychoanalytic and uh, he started the mental hospital also he and he was in the kind of activities he was in, involved and he wrote as a scholar uh, a series of uh, articles and a long a long series of commentary on Bhagavad Gita in the very famous uh, 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 magazine of that period uh, which is was uh, Pravesh Pravasi was uh, one of the very prominent Bengali magazine of that period he was still writing series of articles in that which had nothing to do with his psychoanalytic work. No connection with his work what he was doing in the professional areas. And uh, same thing we can say about the Gopal Swami also that he was a he, animal laboratory he started, but at the same time uh, he has also started a radio station at that time and he got more interested in the cultural activities and giving those discourses and talks on the Indian, Indian culture. So, that was the before the period of independence if you look at after independence also when the psychology departments were started uh, by bifurcating philosophy department and a lot of philosophy department people from philosophy joined the psychology departments. So, there was the expectation that they will bring their background academic background to psychology background of uh, their knowledge of philosophy and Indian psychology and activity they will be it did not happen at all. In fact, most of these philosophy uh, faculty from, from joint psychology they are more interested in learning the research the new, new methodologies doing work in the scientific area and they almost as the history shows that they almost uh, uh, ignore what they whatever background they had because they wanted to develop a new identity as a scientist. So, this is what and I think if you look at uh, the work which was done even during before freedom, there is hardly any reference of Indian in the Indian work on freedom movement. During that period, so means Indian psychology about the Indian movement was Indian freedom national movement or freedom movement was not a concern of Indian psychologists. And uh, if you look at the phenomenon, the, the, the political the, the political scenario and the, the kind of uh, society which had that it is not it has not got reflected in the kind of work which uh, Indian, psych Indian psychologists were doing as a professionals. So, all these if you look at the in the later period also that their te creative talent their their uh, what they were doing they were as if they were living in two separate worlds something which was close to their heart they were doing somewhere else and for professional work they were doing as a part of their job and activity professional, but maybe that uh, their heart was divided in that sense. And I think this was one of the reason that they could not put their whole energy and uh, effort in developing the psychology discipline at that time. I am not saying this is true with for everybody, but I am talking about the general ethos uh, of the period that this is the crisis with psychology that both psychology which we they have been doing is as academic in the discipline and what they see outside the world there is no not much compatibility between these two and to and there is no way they can recon reconcile these two most of the situation they have not been able to reconcile these two different worlds. So, this is what one, one of the argument is Indian psychologists have always lived in two different worlds. Now, this may be ok in the case of physicist or chemist or chemistry or biology or in these subjects this is alright if they live you know different laboratory and uh, they as a real life they have different, but psychology as a subject which is concerned about human behavior, human attitudes about consciousness about uh, you. you then if the, that is dissociated from the what they observed outside world it creates a kind of a, a problem. But you know if you looking looking at that point of view psychology was growing in any case because one this was one of the reason one of the thesis which has this one of the major cause, but psychology in this country was growing in any case. And if you look uh, by we do not have much data the whole problem in this country is that we do not have data. And uh, somebody, some Jain, he collected some data in 
2001 he published some work. He said there may be around 15,000 psychologists working in this country, which includes clinical and all other fields also, as well academic and as well all other fields also. There may be around uh, 200 universities where psychology is being taught. And uh, so, uh, in terms of expansion, in terms of research, and I think uh, one famous uh, Western psychology, he said India is a, India in 87, he wrote, India is a publication giant outside the Western world, with the kind of work which we have been doing, research which we have been doing, and uh, was uh, quite uh, substantial in the terms of publication. But in terms of the impact, and in terms of their continuity, there are rarely any work of that period, if you look at the of this period of history there, where there is some kind of continuity. What we saw in the maybe we can be very few scholars like uh, Professor Ramada Singh or you, who did a work in a particular following a particular stream or particular theme, but uh, not there are not many such people in this country because Indian psychologists were supposed to play diverse roles. They have to do research in different very within areas, and there was very few who had a particular thrust area in which they had, they could make any particular mark. So this is was one of the uh, concern and the thesis that uh, that but beside of this with this expansion, what was psychology was growing that I would say uh, in later year, later years in 80s and later period, psychology grew in three different directions. And I think uh, there was a lot of pressure for Indian psychology to become more and more concerned about the problems and of this particular of this country and be able to participate in the developmental process. And what we call the, the new movement, we started the movement of indigenization that psychology should be indigenized. And indigenized indigenization has different connotations of course, but uh, that was one of the concern and one of the thrust which uh, was visible in in the uh, in the uh, around 80s and later period and the indigen indigenization may, may mean two different things one we what we call the exogenous indigenization in an endogenous indigenization exogenous is the indigenization is what uh, the, these terms were used by dugan sinha and exogenous indigenization is that taking the theories western theories and the concepts and how they can be indigenized, can be adapted uh, and served in the within the Indian context. This is what, what uh, that uh, how we, they, we can indigenize them, how we can make, uh, make them useful for studying our own problems. And endogenous indigenization was the kind of indigenization that we taking our own heritage, our own uh, uh, traditional psychology which was there for thousands of years, that how that psychology can be examined, understood and maybe make relevant for the present society and for the present times. So, these were the two different kind of streams uh, work which was you know come, come coming up and, and because of that I think uh, the three movements started in this country and the first movement was uh, I would say cross cultural psychology, which started in a big way in this country that many of the Indian psychologists joined this cross cultural movement we started in the 70s and grew in 80s and later period. And uh, uh, Indian psychologists were not only part of this movement, they were part of the, you know, they were presidents, also the two presidents of Indian, uh, International Association of Cross Cultural Psychology were from India, two presidents, many members, many members and their executive members were from India. So, that was a way Indian, I thought uh, Indian psychologists thought this is one way they could make, find a way to uh, to test western theories or, it, or they, they expand the knowledge psychological knowledge uh, in country and different areas but as dugan sinha said later on that what cross cultural psychology was doing in spite of all popularity and all participation in the cross cultural psychology cross cultural psychology was primarily testing the western models and theories in different countries there were hardly few as instances, there may be instances, but very few instances where theories and concepts which were part of the third world or different other, other countries were tested uh, cross culturally. Very few examples, such examples. So, cross cultural movement in the become in a way, way for, for Indian psychologists to mark, make a mark internationally, but at the same time, 
that did not help us in understanding and developing and our own um, concerns. Another movement uh, I would say we started because I cross cultural psychology has its own problems now I think there there is a lot of work which says that cross cultural psychology movement is also internationally on decline. The another parallel movement was uh, what to case project was what we can call uh, problem oriented research. They were one of the which started much earlier by J P B Sinha and other people who the, who thought that Western theories can be brought in India, but these theories can be used for the purpose of understanding and studying in the in the in the Indian the problems and the, and, the, and bringing the methodology, particularly the Western methodology, and using these methodologies in this country and expanding the you know making it relevant for the society for society here. There was one thing. Another thing which uh, uh, movement we started was of Indian psychology. When we say indigenous, indigenization, Indian, Indian, Indian psychology in the sense that we need to need to know our own heritage. We need to know our own traditions, our own contribution, and our own theories and the concepts, which may be useful and in the for the, for the present society. And that is how the whole movement of Indian psychology started. Indian psychology movement is not very old. I would say maybe 20, 15 or 20 or 30 years old. Though the book was written much earlier by Yudhna Sinha, but not the not much has happened during this period. Only in recent times, this movement is now catching up. So this another movement was of the movement of Indian psychology that, that let us understand, test, and and examine our own heritage, our own knowledge which we have been uh, we can expand. I think the whole idea which is coming up in recent times I would say is that can we develop a psychology which is alternative to the western psychology. It is not that western psychology is useless. The whole idea is not that western psychology is not applicable or useful in this country. But there may be another ways of understanding the problems, another way of dealing with these problems. Because Western psychology has not been able to handle the problems of the West also. If you look at the WHO reports, and we look at the report that the way depression is increasing worldwide, and uh, WHO data shows suggest that by 2030, the 50 percent of the world population will be suffering from depression. Half of the world will be depression, suffering from depression by 2030. This is the WHO data. If you look in terms of the mental health problems, if you look at the other kind of crisis which, is, which the world is going through, or the West, even the West is going through, these Western theories and concepts are even not working within in the Western system. So the whole idea is that is it possible to develop an alternative, a new way of thinking, a new psychology, a new psychology which can be more conducive, more. And I think in this area, this is the area where uh, Indian work, Indian contribution can be significant. Not only Indian, but the traditional societies, Chinese or the, the different societies or Latino societies where their own knowledge, their traditional knowledge, can these people come together and provide a kind of alternative to the Western psychology. This is one of the uh, theme which is emerging uh, from the present. Uh, discourses in this particular area. Now, we can think that uh, Western, uh, Western psychology also declining in this country. It is a big, big concern uh, all everywhere that the psychology is not growing. The Western, the psychology we started in the uh, 1916 in, in this country is not growing in this country. In fact, it is going down now. After all this expansion and all this development which we see, this psychology is has not been able to make any impact rather than that in terms of the quality of students, in terms of the faculty, in terms of the research output. Because the, the recent data, uh, six months back the data which has come that if China is publishing nine papers, we are publishing two papers. And 10 years back or to 15 years back, we are publishing 10 papers and China was publishing nine papers. So the way the, if you look at the rapid decline in our contribution and our work, the number of papers, I have not brought the data today, but the data we showed the number of Indians publishing in the western journals, in the in the in the standard uh, international journals, even number of those Indian scholars is declining. 
from India, they may be outside who are working, but those who are working within India, the publication of Indians in the international journals, standard journals is declining rapidly and it is declining rapidly. So, they, so we can, so there is a, I think there is a kind of a concern and anxiety that the psychology which started 100 years back almost, that psychology is now and we need to think very again and, and understand that what factors are, what reasons are there and how this psychology can be rejuvenated. Now, this psychology is declining, uh, maybe, may, maybe, maybe there are many reasons, you know, people have given uh, the whole analysis, we look at this analysis that why this psychology is declining. There are many reasons, because there is no supportive, one is of the very important point which is made and uh, uh, in many papers is that there is no supportive intellectual climate. If you are doing some work and you want to find people who can uh, look at your work, analyze, uh, look at this work, uh, review it, give you a kind of feedback uh, and understand or appreciate what you are doing, that kind of culture and that kind of support system is not there. Although psychology as a profession has remained, but psychology in that, in, in that sense that the, the support within the academic community and outside both ways, that kind of support system is lacking. This is one of the point which is make, which is made that uh, and uh, there may be other points which are made that uh, there is a increasing student population, you look at the university system and you go that these institutions, they is, a, is we are daunted by the students one class 200 students, 300 BA students and they are very small laboratory where you work and if you look at the data which is very interesting that uh, some of I collected data in the eastern UP and UP and part of the Bihar. The study shows that they produce more than 30 percent of the students in the, within India. If you like to totally their production is more than 30 percent. Colleges, small colleges have psychology students, how many? 600 students, they want small laboratory somewhere. So, there is a mass production there, but in terms of quality of education, quality of teaching, quality of uh, environment, uh, that is uh, sadly missing in this country and the, and the kind of will to do it. Another point which they make is a decline is that we have not been able to make much progress in terms of uh, methodology in this country, how we can develop the methodology which is more appropriate uh, for studying the problems of this country, keeping in mind the kind of uh, you know ethos and the kind of uh, culture from which we come that that, that kind of empiricist and, uh, and then the experimental methodology works in some cases in some areas, but if you want to do research at the at the global level at the uh, holistic level or at a kind of a more what is uh, level that that becomes a problem that how we do it. So, it is a serious problem that kind of methodology which works at, at the individual level we have, but which can work at a larger group level or societal level or uh, that kind of methodology we are we not been able to develop because the psychology has always remained a individual analysis of individual subjects. Another point is that psychology has become as the point which is made very restricted within the narrow disciplinary boundaries. You know, we can do research for the purpose of research for, but we want to understand the social problems. Then we cannot just remain confined within the psychology boundaries. And that is becoming part of the sociology or anthropology or economics unless that kind of cross disciplinary uh, research takes place, uh, this kind of uh, problem oriented research does not become very meaningful and uh, purpose in this country. Even those places where people of the different disciplines are together, they sit in the same on the same um, floor as I can see here in the SSS department. There is very much, very less, less uh, interdisciplinary work which goes on, and uh, and within such in the university system, there are different departments, and these departments are confined to only what they, what they keep.
keep doing, but that kind of uh, approach and that kind of concern is completely missing. Anyway, these are some of the points uh, I thought uh, I would make uh, that uh, how now question which before us and this is challenge before us that how we can rejuvenate psychology in this country. How we can psychology the, 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 the paradox is that the demand for psychology is increasing here and elsewhere whether it is a clinical or professional or uh, social or other areas, there is, a, there is a demand for good psychologists and these psychologists are not available. There are, no, there are not many students, there are not many people. You, there, is a, there is need for this uh, students for good research programs and these are not available. So, this kind of that, that they, we have people, we have students, but that quality is sadly missing. And I think what we need to do need is that uh, we have need, we need really a good uh, uh, thinking about it. I think uh, that uh, given in the present scenario, what we can do I, and I think this is a major question and the question mark which will, have, will put on psychology.